Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, today we're going to continue building the table and lamp. Um, I can review the table if you wish, um, or you can watch the video. That might be better. But what I want to do is continue by building the lamp today. Um, and then if that goes smoothly, then we can send both the table and the lamp over to layout. We can refine the surfaces and then we can begin to do test renders. And um, hopefully by the end of this week, um, this project will be complete and you can render it and um, save it as a Photoshop file, a JPEG file, and then um, upload it to Google Drive. Before I continue with the lamp, um, are there any questions from you? No? Q&A, there's my attendance. No? Okay. So here is the table and I have saved it as a table um, in my object folder which is contained in my content folder. So, uh, question, Cassandra. Well, how did I color the table? Um, as I was building it, um, this is what I would do. If you forget to do that, um, it, it's pretty easy. But remember, um, the saved version of my table is all on one layer. So if nothing is selected, then everything is selected. So if I just want to select the table top, then what I need to do is down at the bottom here, <clears throat> I'm going to make sure that I have polygon selected. And I don't like having um, action center center of the mouse right now. I'm going to make it center of selection. And I'm going to select the top polygon of the tabletop just by a single click on the top of it. And that's in perspective. And in perspective, you need to make sure that texture is visible. Now to select all of the polygons, because remember to a cube, there are six sides and I can assign a different texture to each of those sides if I wish. But I wanna assign the same texture right now to the entire tabletop. So what I need to do is I need to go to select, select connected, that's over to the left. Now they're all selected. Now what you do is you hit Q, Q on the keyboard. And what that does is it says that now we can change the surface. I don't want this to be the default because I already created one called tabletop. I can assign it that. If you did not assign a surface, then you name it here. And then on the, um, let's go ahead and change the color. Well, I can't change the color but here. I'll show you how I can though, once you have created the surface. And that's what we're gonna be doing today as well. Then you can click here and see it won't allow me to do that because I already created a, a surface for it. But you will click here to create a, a color and then we'll say, okay, we're done. And then go over to the lower left-hand corner and click to deselect. Now, once you've already assigned a surface to an object, that can be changed in, you know, forever. But where you do that is in the upper left-hand corner here where it says surface editor, you select that. There are two surface editors. Um, um, Erica, no, I won't, but I do have sample videos that I can um, send to you and I can also I can get you started with Blender if you wish. I don't know Blender that well, but I can get you started with it. Does that help at all, Erica? Because I, yeah, I did build a table the other day in Blender, but I did, and I sort of assigned color, and there are distinct differences um, between the two programs. And if you do a, a simple Google search on table and lamp in Blender, um, you'll find some videos on that. And that might be helpful too. So anyway, back to assigning the surface to the table and lamp, you'll see that I have these two surfaces here and the surface editor. 
And if I go to tabletop, you can see that it's red. Well, maybe let's go ahead and change it to blue. And I can do that. But that's once you've already assigned a surface. Then I'll close that. And I can go ahead and I can save my object and it's been updated. But again, these are just placeholders for the time being. So the next step is to build the lamp. So for the size of the lamp and the placement, um, I'm going to use the table as a guide. You don't have to do this, but for this lesson, it sort of helps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer by clicking on a new layer up here in the right hand corner. And I'm going to select the bottom half so the table is in the background. Now, um, there's a couple of things. The table and lamp, uh, and this is, I'll try to make this comparison as often as I can. But um, if you're working in Blender, they're all part of you know, one object and they're on separate layers, but it's different than working in, in, uh, in Lightwave. Um, what I prefer to do in Lightwave is to save them as separate objects. And there is a workaround with that that a former student has um, told me about, but I need to look into that. So let me show you what I do here. And then in Blender, you probably will do it all as one, same, one file. Um, over here, though, I, I need to decide you know, what kind of shape I'm going to use for my, tap, my uh, lamp base. And for me, I'm going to use a ball, just a ball. And if you recall from last week, I made sure that I had this um, um, the numeric requester up at all times. So again, if I hit N for numeric, that becomes visible. And then also I like having the point in statistics as well as um, the uh, polygon statistics visible. I'll bring those up in a minute. Now, as soon as I selected that, notice that it automatically creates a one meter sphere when you use that. I really don't need that, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shrink this down. And I like the orientation of my sphere to be um, just as you see here along the Y axis. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to move this sort of like a bullet shape or football shape. And let's go ahead and zoom out a bit more, and I'm going to make this a little bit squattier. And then zoom back in, and then move it down a little bit so that it's resting on the table. OK. So there's my lamp base. The um, fit A to fit. Um, let me go ahead and fix it. I don't want that. That's a pretty good size. I can always resize it. So let's zoom out a little bit. Ah, I need to resize it. So to resize it, I can use, I can either create it from scratch again, which at this stage may not be a bad idea, or I could always, um, I can always use the stretch tool. Notice how high it is. It's just way, way, way too high. So let me do it both ways. I'm going to go to Modify and select Stretch. But I'm going to not do it from the center of the selection. I'm going to do it from a mouse position. So I'll click here where the base meets the tabletop. I'm going to hold down the Control key and move the mouse toward me, and it will become a little bit smaller. Okay. Then also, if I want to shrink the whole thing, I could use size and do the same thing. Make sure it's from the mouse position and click and drag and make it smaller. And that's a pretty good size, really. You know, that's not bad. Maybe I need to move it. So T for move. Let's move it over because I like it centered. Yeah, that's a good size for a base. Now, um, so let's turn off move. 
And now what I need to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in right here. on the base Turn off move. and the football shape that I've created is if you were to put that on a table it just fall over so now I need to create a base for the um, for the lamp the lamp base um, so that you know make the bottom a little bit broader so that it doesn't tip over and there's a variety of ways that we can do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the following. I'm going to select a group of polygons down here and I'm going to delete them. So to do that, since make sure that the, the, the base is the only thing in the foreground, um, I'm going to right click and drag around this bottom group of polygons down here. Okay. And then I'm going to hit um, the X, Command X to delete. And now what I want to do is I want to stretch these points out. So I need to switch from polygon to point. And I'm going to, from the back view, I'm going to right click and drag around this group of points. And now I need to resize them so that they stretch outward. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the center of selection rather than the center of the mouse, and I'm going to select size. And now I can move my mouse anywhere, and I can click and I can drag, and notice that that stretches that out, and it makes it larger. Now, it doesn't touch the base, but that's OK, I, or the, the tabletop, but now I can hit T for move and I can move it down so it actually touches the top of the table. Now I have a base for the base, something that makes it um, more stable. I can turn off move, I can deselect points. But now what you're gonna notice by me deleting those polygons, when I look down at the bottom here, you don't see the bottom of that face, that, the, the bottom of the, the base. And the reason is, is that when you create a, a, a primitive, is that polygons are two-sided, but by default, only one side is surfaced. So by me removing those polygons, when I look at this on the, from the, you know, if I use the perspective view and I zoom in here a little bit, you can't see those polygons. They're there, but you can't see them. So what I want to do is for the right now is I want to close up the bottom of that. So I need to switch and make sure that points are selected, which they were from the last time. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to select all of these points again. I'm going to lasso around all of them. And now I'm going to, to close it up. You have to select all the points and I'm going to hit P for polygon. And notice now it closes it up. If this is facing the wrong way, and it's possible because the surface normals could be flipped, um, let me go back and let's select again. Let's select the polygon. Um, so we have to switch from point view to polygon. There we go. So there the polygon is selected. But if I hit F on the keyboard, notice that it, it looks just as it did before, invisible. But all I've done is I've flipped the surface normal to face the other direction. And I don't want it facing on the inside of my, tamp, my lamp base. I want it facing outward. So with that polygon selected, I hit F or flip and flip it back. OK. Now, the other thing that I might want to do too. So now I need to deselect the polygon. Let's move this over here like so zoom down a little bit, is that again, I want to resurface this a little bit so that it looks a little bit nicer. Um, and I'm going to use maybe a purple color for it. So again, with just the base visible, I'm going to hit Q. And I'll call this lamp base. OK. And I'll click a color here, and I'm going to make it purple. Purple color. 
Oh, that's blue. How about purple? Yeah, purple. There you go. That's a good color for it. Boom. Now, you'll notice that um, you can see all of the facets of the polygons. And I don't like that. I want it to be smooth like it's made of ceramic. So there's a couple of things that I can do. One is that I can go back over the surface editor and I can bring that up. And with lamp base selected at the bottom here, what I can do is that I can turn on smoothing. It's right below where it says clip map T. As soon as I click on smoothing, notice how it smooths it out. It still looks a little bit awkward to me though. So now what I'm going to do to make the transition from, I mean, it, it, it could be, you know, look this way, but I want a smoother transition to look like this thing has been made out of ceramic. So with this object selected, I'm going to hit the tab key and it's going to give me an error message. But as soon as I do that, notice how it smooths everything out and rounds out the corner. Okay, so I like that better. So now my lamp base is pretty good. It's not bad. What I want to do though, um, and this is a good habit, I think, especially when you're working in lightweight, is that when you're building objects for your scene, think of them as going into a su supermarket or a target or whatever, and you're filling your basket with objects. But each one is individual and separate from the other. Right now, my file contains a table and a lamp. So this would be like being the basket itself. It's containing both of these elements. I would rather it be them be separate elements rather than, um, you know, separate objects rather than being grouped together the way they are at the moment. And I just think that's a better practice so that in the future, if I want multiple lamps or I want multiple tables, I can go ahead and I can open them up and lay out because I already have my list of objects built. So what I'm going to do is I, since I've already used the table as a guide for placement and for sizing, I don't need the table anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, cut command X, the table lamp. So it's gone. And now I'm going to go to File, New. I want a new, um, uh, a new file. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit Command V for Paste. And it remembers the size and it remembers the placement. And now I need to save this. So I'm going to go Save, Save Object As. And I'll name it Lamp. And make sure that it goes inside my object folder. Okay. Hold on one second. Some people are asking questions. Um, you don't have to put the question that, that Erica is asking. Do you have to put it in um, on the table? No, you don't. But it does sort of make it easier for right now. In fact, in the future, but what you probably do need to do is pay close attention to scale so that when you do send objects over to layout later on or you do place them that you're not continually having to resize objects that you should, you know, and I'm not looking at the scale in terms of meters or anything. I'm looking at the size of the table and the, the relationship of the lamp to it for scaling it. I'm not looking at actual size. I'm just kind of eyeballing it to make sure that it looks right. So I think that answers your question. So you can send it over as a separate object later. So now what I want to do, now that I have a new object named as lamp, I'm ready to build the lamp shade. So I'm going to hit, again, A to make sure that it fits all. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. So now I'm ready to build the lamp shade. And for our purposes right now, um, probably a good choice would be um, the disk tool for our lamp shade. And again, I can go ahead over the, the top view and I can click and drag, and create 
the lampshade and I can click and drag like so. And now I can move this up a little bit. Okay. So that looks pretty believable. But again, I'm faced with similar issues that I had before. Because this is a closed cylinder, I don't need the top and I don't need the bottom. And also, I could leave the lampshade like this, but typically lampshades are sort of tapered. Not always. If I wanted a fewer number of sides, like maybe I wanted only four sides, or I wanted six sides, or whatever, I could change the number of sides here. I'm going to leave it the default um, 24 right now, but that's something that you might want to play with. Okay. And again, I want the orientation to be along the y-axis, but it's, if I switch to x, see what it does, or if I switch to z, see what it does, I want it to be oriented along the y. So that's something that you can also play with, and you can change the position of it, you can change the scale of it. I want to make sure, though, that the x and the z are the same, and they are, they're 200, in my case, they're 235 millimeters. Do they need to be the same for you? No, they don't. Depends on how big you're building it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off this. And now I need to get rid of the top and the bottom. So with from the perspective view, I'll select <coughs> polygon mode and I'm going to select the polygon here. And I'm going to turn it using this little widget and hold down the shift key and select that polygon, and I'm going to hit K for kill. So I've killed them. And again, see, this is one-sided. I can't see the inside of this. And I want to be able to see the inside of this. So what I need to do is I'm going to assign a surface to it. So to do that, I'll hit, um, and, and a mistake that I just made is that this is on the same layer as the, the base, and I don't like that. So I'm going to select a few polygons, and I'm going to go to Select Connected. I'm going to hit Command X to cut. I'm going to create a new layer and put the base in the background and hit Command V for paste. So now they're on separate layers. Now I can hit Q, and I can name it, and I'll name it Lamp Shade. And let's pick a color for that. And maybe kind of a light, um, yeah, a light yellowish kind of color for that. Okay, now how do I fix that? Um, there are a couple of ways that I can create double sided polygons. The easiest way, or probably for us right now, the most afford, efficient way is to bring up this, the surface editor make sure that the lamp shade is selected and then you'll notice here beneath where i had you select smoothing before which isn't a bad idea we're going to select smoothing so that smooths it but i want to select also select double sided and now i can see both sides okay so now i've fixed that now what i want to do is i want to taper my lampshade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to point mode and I'm going to right click along the top and lasso all of these points and I'm going to select under the modify tab I'm going to select size. And now what I want to do is I want it from center of selection. Now I can move my mouse and notice how it tapers it like so. Now, there is another way to do this. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, this is one way of doing it. So I'm going to undo Command Z. I'm going to turn off size and deselect. With nothing selected, what I can do is like, there's another modify tool that allows me to do that. Um, if I come down here under, here I have taper and taper constrained. So if I select taper, this is similar to um, using the stretch tool. 
And if I click from the top view, watch what happens. See how it's tapering it? But I have, I have control over the, the X and the Z separately. Okay. And I also, when you have the numeric requester visible, notice that we can control with the fall off what direction that taper is going. If I select the one, the little button to the right, now watch what happens when I taper it. See how the bottom now is affected, not the top, and I'm doing it from the, the top view. So I want it the other way. But instead of using taper, I'm going to use taper constrain because that's similar to using the size tool. So now I, you know, based on the center of selection, I can taper it and it just tapers it like so. And I'm set and I'm good to go. So that's it. So those are all the different ways of tapering my lampshade, making it double sided, smoothing it. Now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it's saved. And the last thing that I want to do is I want to put the lampshade now on the same layer as the lamp base. So I'm going to hit Command X. I'm going to select the lamp base and I'm going to hit Command V. And I'm going to save again. So, so far, um, there is my, um, my lamp. And because we're not doing a detailed lamp, I'm not going to build all the structure inside or the light bulb or that sort of thing. But when we send it over to layout, we are going to put a light inside of it. There's probably one more thing that I should do is that in order to cast shadows onto a floor, I should create a floor. So that's what I'm, what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go to a new file here. And then right along the floor, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create um, from the create tab, I'm going to select a box. And I just need to create right here like so. And over here, I want to make sure that this, um, I want the depth, let's make the depth to be maybe five meters. Let's make the, um, Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I want the center to be zero, zero, zero. But the, the width I want to be maybe, I'll say three meters. There we go. I want the height to be zero and I want to be depth, the depth to be three meters. There we go. So that's pretty big. That's like a 10 foot by 10 foot floor. Um, let's go ahead and turn off the box, hit A to reset everything. This would be a good size floor for us. And now I'm going to hit Q and I'll name it floor. And I'm going to save it as a floor. I'll click on here. And let's make it kind of a nice brown color, just for the heck of it. All right, now I need to make sure that I save the object. Save, save object as, make sure that it's in my object folder, and I'll name it floor. So I have all three of my objects created. Now what I need to do is um, send them over to layout, and I've already opened up layout, and it's in the background. So the first thing that I can do now is I can go ahead and make sure in the upper right hand corner that this is synced. And I'm going to go ahead and send object to layout. And there's my floor. Now I can click modeler and that takes me back. Now let's go to the table. Table needs to be saved again. The little asterisk that was up there tells me that I didn't save the last change. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send it over to layout. So there's my table that's been sent over. And now I'm going to go back to Modeler again. And I'm going to switch to Lamp. And I'm going to send it over, send that object over to Layout. Now, I only need to send it over once. If you send it over multiple times, then it will duplicate itself. 
just like pulling off, you know, multiple lamps off of a shelf and putting them on the table. Only what you can do in modeling that you can't do in other programs is they can occupy the same space. And that can get confusing and it can also cause um, uh, shading errors or rendering errors, I should say. So the next step is that we need to redefine the surfaces so that they look a little bit more believable and, um, or, you know, to dress it up a bit. We could leave it as is, that's quite possible. Um, but I wanna make some changes to this, make it look a little bit more believable. Um, I have a single light source, but I wanna put a light inside my lamp. Um, and we might try a few other things as well. And I need to change the camera angle and that sort of thing. So what I need to do before I do anything else is now I need to save this, now that I'm in layout, as another file. And this is going to be a layout file, okay, or a scene file, I should say. So I'm going to go to save, save scene as. And hopefully my computer isn't crashing. There we go. Now I need to do is I'm going to go to my desktop. See, I don't know where this is being saved. I have Gallery 2, Lightwave. I'm going to go to um, my desktop, make sure that it's in the right folder. And I have Content Fall 2020. That was the folder that I made the other day. And then inside the Scene folder is where this needs to be saved. And I will name it Table and Lamp. Now, in Blender, it's all rolled into one. There is no separate between scene and object. It's just selecting different, um, uh, different modes, but it's all saved under one file. This is, this is uh, kind of a, I don't know if it's an old way of doing it or not, but it's the way that Lightwave has always done it. Um, so, uh, you know, I've been using Lightwave forever and I am, uh, uh, you know, accustomed to it. So it makes good sense to me, but I know that just about every other program on, in the universe uses, um, does not use separate uh, modeling and layout files anymore. So the next thing that I need to do is to, is to look at this maybe from uh, a camera view rather than the perspective view and adjust my camera. Um, maybe adjust the lights a little bit and um, add some lights and then we'll, we will be ready to go. Um, we'll go ahead and render it and we'll be done and then I can take you over to Blender and we can look at that for a little bit. Okay. So the next step. Right now, if you look at the top right hand corner, or no, I'm sorry, the top left, um, we're in perspective. What I want to do is I want to switch to camera view because if you'll notice a couple of things, let me switch back to perspective mode again. Notice the camera in the lower left hand corner. This is what the camera sees. Perspective view is sort of like a director's view of the scene. It isn't necessarily what the camera is seeing. So I'm going to switch from perspective to camera. Okay, and you can have multiple cameras. And now what I want to do is I want to move the camera closer. So I want to make sure that I have down at the bottom, now we're in layout, so we have a different set of tools to the left and a different set of tabs and a different set of buttons at the bottom. We also, you'll also notice for animation, we have a timeline. In this class, we don't use the timeline, okay? And you'll notice that it shows here, um, if you have objects selected, you'll notice that I have four separate objects here. Um, I have the floor, I have the table. Now I have table layer one and table layer two. So let's select table one. Did I put um, 
I thought I put the lamp on the same layer. Let me go back to modeler. Let's go back to modeler. Come on. So that's okay. Let's look at um, the, the cable. And let's select that. And let's make sure that that is saved. Because there really should only be. Now let's switch back. I don't need to send it over. I just need to switch back to layout. Now it shows these as being separate elements for the lamp. And that's not good. So let me go back to modeler. Let me, um, I mean, it, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. But I'm going to save this again just to make sure that this is okay. I'm going to go to save, save as. I want it to be lamp. I'm going to replace the old with the new. And now let me go back to layout. And now let's select. Yeah, now see how it's defined as one object, not separate lampshade and lamp base. That's what I prefer to do. Now, if you, for any reason you wanted to animate them separately, then you probably would would want to keep them on separate layers. But because I want to treat the lamp base and the lamp shade as an is a is the same element, I want to want it to be um, on the same layer. And the same with the legs of the table and the tabletop. I want them to be on one. So there we go. So instead of four objects, I should see here. Yeah three objects. I have the floor, the table, and the lamp. Okay. Now this is where my, I'm looking through the camera now. So I want to make sure that I select the camera and I need to move the camera to be able to get it in a better position. Something that's a little bit more dynamic. If I want to move the camera up, I right click and move the mouse forward. If I want to move the camera down, right click and drag and I move the the mouse towards me. I want to move the camera up a little bit so I can see the tabletop. I'm going to click and drag over. And then I'm going to hit Y for rotate. And uh, to see this more from a three D or a uh, uh, three quarter view. Now I'm going to hit T for move again. And I'm going to move this closer so I can get a nice close view. And then maybe right click and drag the, that up a little bit, left click and move it over. Okay, so you have to make sure that when you do that, that the camera is selected. Now what I want to do is I want to refine the surfaces. So um, let me get that started. Where are we at time? Uh, just four more minutes. So let me start with um, let me start with the 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 table, and then I'm going to switch to Blender, and hopefully I can get you guys started with Blender. So I need to bring up the Surface Editor right here, and it's not visible to me, so I need to bring it down here. Now, you'll notice for every object that I have, it lists all of the different surfaces. So what I want to do is I want to select the tabletop, and it's blue at the moment. But there are a number of presets that we can use. I can change the color from here. I can change its roughness. I can change its specular highlights. All these things are default settings in here. And this is set in principle VSDF. What I can also do though, is that there's a little preset button here. And I'm, that's what I'm gonna use for right now. And you can see up here that, um, let's go ahead and look at A through Z. That's um, surface presets. Um, here we go, over to the left, I'm going to use for a tabletop, Let's make, make our tabletop glass. So here are all the presets that they have 
four table top. I can use flint glass, I can use diamond, I can use clear glass. Maybe I want it to look like jade, maybe I want it frosted, a frosted glass. Um, let's go ahead and make it um, clear glass. So with glass, with the tabletop selected, if I double click on it, it will load those settings, leaving tabletop as the name, not glass. So now it's glass. Now you can see over here that it's using dialectic, which is a good feature for glass. And maybe I want to change the color of the glass a little bit. So I can go ahead and I can click the color here and maybe I want it to be kind of a light blue or maybe a light gray. So if I click that and I click OK, it's a little bit darker now so that it is transparent and all the, the perspective, the reflective properties and that sort of thing that you normally see, we may have to go in and, and switch and change. There is another way of doing this. Instead of using material dialectic, I can also use um, an older version of this, which is standard. Okay, so from standard, notice that it switches to gray. I'm going to uh, switch here for a color and let's use kind of a, maybe a, a light blue or a bluish color for my color. And then what I'm going to do is I don't need luminosity that will create brightness. But what I can do is I can crank up specular highlights a little bit. So maybe make those 20. Um, and maybe make glossiness around 40%. And again, how do I know this? And just from doing this several times, around 40. Um, translucency, I don't need to change, but I do need to change transparency. And that's going to be close to you know, like 90%, 95%. Okay. So we're good for right now. It's just another way of doing that. Let's go ahead and look at another one here. Let's look at metallic. So we have glass and I'm going to switch for, I wouldn't want the table top. I want the table legs now. And let's switch to um, metals. And maybe I want it to be brushed chrome or just plain old chrome. So I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to load the settings. Now, in this particular instance, that's what it's going to look like. Because if you look, we're looking at textured, shaded, solid. But if I switch to VPR, you'll notice it changes dramatically. So this is virtual preview and render. Looks very different, doesn't it? So this is, gives us a, 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 a view of what it's going to look like when we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save the scene again. And I'm going to switch to Blender for the remainder of the, the time that we have for another 15 minutes or so to get you started with a table and the same with the lamp. And then also point you to a couple of um, videos that are available that maybe will help you if you're using Blender. Okay, so I'm going to go and we'll finish this up on Wednesday. Oh, we'll finish up all the surfaces and we'll show you, I'll show you how to render this. So I need to make sure that this is saved. I'm going to say, do two things. I'm going to say, save, save scene as, and I want it still to be table and lamp. I'm going to replace the old with the new. But because I've made changes to, oh, come on. Because I've made changes um, to the objects, I want those to be saved as well. So I need to go to um, save. And then where it says down here, save all, that's what I want to do. Just save all objects. I can do all of, or save all objects since I already saved the scene. And that will update all the objects that I've, that I've changed. OK. So let me hide um, what we have here. I'm going to close the surface editor. I'm going to close the presets. Um, I'm going to hide this. 
I'm going to hide this and I'm going to open Blender. Okay. So I just want to use general settings right now. Now, let me show you what I did the other day. So I'm going to go, just, I just worked with a lamp. So I'm going to go ahead and open. How about open recent? No, it doesn't show any recent files. So I'm going to go to open and I'm going to go to my desktop. And I should have a blender folder, which I do. And it didn't save it. Why not? Okay, then let's go from scratch. So you'll notice that it starts with a simple cube in here. So I have uh, my ability to control this. So what I want to do over here is um, under my view, I'm, I'm going to leave it in perspective for the right, right now. And I don't want, I want it to be in modeling view so that I can actually model this. Um, and I, because they already give us a cube, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edit it. So I'm in edit mode. So now what I can do is I can um, go ahead and using the little widget up here. Okay. I can select or I can go over here. Here's my cube. Let's go ahead and Go ahead and move this like so. Come on. Oh, I gotta close this. I don't want to add a modifier just yet. I need to go to my size or my options over here. There we go. Told you this will be a little bit frustrating for me as well. Ooh, tools. Um, hold on here. I need to switch to let's see if I can't go ahead and I don't want individual points. I want the whole object to be selected. Um, I don't know why I can't save it. Let me try to file and then one more time. I'm going to go to Blender. Um, open. So I'm going to go back to my desktop. And let me go back and see if I can't find it again. I thought for sure I saved my Blender files here. It doesn't have anything. Damn. I know I saved it. Okay, then I got to go from scratch again. Okay, so we're in modeling mode. I want to be in edit. If I have object mode, and that's a little bit different for us. So we have object mode, edit mode, sculpt mode, and vertice mode. I'm gonna, I want to be in edit mode. I, well, let me just leave it in object mode for the moment. And now what I want to do is I want to change the scale of it. So I can rotate it from here. I can change the scale from here. So if I do that and I sit, select scale, now I can stretch it like so using these widgets. Okay, and I can pull it and flatten it. And that's what I'm trying to do here. So I can flatten it. Now I can switch to move and I can move this up like so. That's how I started the other day with um, the tabletop. But what I want to do over here, and I'm not seeing this. There we go. Um, I want to be able to determine the size of my object. Here we go. Transform. I want that this is the transform here. So you'll notice the scale right now is has been changed from its original the Z axis location. Moved it up, you know, meters. Remember how I did that the other day with Photoshop? Uh, or Photoshop with um, Lightwave. So I'm gonna change it to inches. So I'm gonna go, remember I want to move it up 30 inches, 30. 
inches. So I need to move it down a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead and from the top view, um, I want to change from from flat mode, and I do that in the upper right hand corner here. And I want this to be um, x-ray mode so I can see through it. And I don't want to select it, but now what I want to do is you'll notice in the upper right hand corner, these, this gives us, um, because I said in, uh, in Lightwave, we have layout and we have model. Well, this is all kind of built into one. We have the camera in here, we have the light in here, and we have um, uh, the cube at the moment. Well, now what I want to do is I want to create another object. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, under layout mode, I want to, with object, let's go ahead and create another object here. So I need to, um, modeling, I want to add an object here. And what I want to add is I want to add um, not a light, not a camera. I want to add, where is it? Not text, not surface, not mesh. How about, I don't want to select the box. I want to add an object. So let's do that. That's it. Sorry. Um, I want to add where is my, it's a cylinder, what I want to add. Uh, let me try again. Maybe I'm just not seeing it. Um, uh, well, I'm clearly not, but I want to add Surface text, armature lattice, empty, light, camera, speaker, horn. I want to add an object. I want to add where did I find it? Oh, my objects. Well, I'm having trouble with sort of folks. So I want to add a cylinder. And I did this the other day. And I can't find the cylinders in here. Um, so that might be it for us today in a minute. And I'm going to have to redo this for you in my time, other time here, and get back to you on Wednesday to help you guys out. Um, I don't want to add a mesh. I don't want to add. Oh, come on. Paste objects, current collection, rotations, constraints, track. I forget where it is. I'm sorry. I really do. Um, for the other basic objects in here. Anybody who's used, um, who's used Blender, can you tell me where the cylinders are? Cylinders, so I can make the legs. By default, it creates a, a box, but I want to create now um, a cylinder. So I'm having trouble finding, and it was up here, I mean, before when I select modeling, you know, and I wanted to create a new object, um, I found a whole bunch of them from here. I thought I did. Um, I'm just struggling with it at the moment. This isn't helping you. 
So let me um, this afternoon uh, work on this myself again. I did it the other day and I need to do it again, but I'm forgetting already. Uh, as I said, this blender is still pretty new to me. So um, if there aren't any more questions, then I think we're going to call it quits for today. And if you're working in Lightwave, build, um, you know, try to build the lamp today and begin to refine the surfaces. And then um, when we come back on Wednesday, hopefully I'll have a, a table and a lamp. Oh, I know what I was going to do. Um, I was going to bring this down here. And I was going to go into um, I had a bunch of them here. I'm going to do a search and I'm going to look up um, table and lamp created in Blender. And this is what I found the other day. So if you want, there are different kinds of ones. This is similar to what we're doing right here. So um, if I play this now and I try to record it, it will um, won't allow me to create the others. But you know, these are pretty short. Um, but this is using the basic materials. So this is what I would do today. This is where I was looking the other day. And so here's some quick tutorials on making tables and lamps. And there's probably a combination between the two that you can use, you know, between these. Does that help you out, Erica, a little bit? And then, as I said, this afternoon, I will build my table and lamp inside Blender. Yes, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I will make sure that you are here. So let me go back to my role sheet here. And um, Erica Malone. Got you. Okay. Anybody else that I missed? I think I have all of you. Okay. So let me work myself in Blender this afternoon. And then um, we'll go ahead and we'll um, continue with the table and lamp. And I'm going to post this both on Canvas and the link to it um, in YouTube. I mean, it will be a YouTube video, but I'll also post the link to it in Canvas if you want to see today's um, lecture and then go back and review how I built the the lamp and how I uh, sent it over to layout and saved it as a scene and everything. And then I need to brush up a bit more on Blender. I thought I had this nailed down and I clearly don't. So um, I have my cube and I didn't even I didn't save the file properly before it and I don't know why. So I've got issues there as well. Okay, so that's it for today. I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye and I'll stop recording and I'll post this in a few minutes and um, so that you're free to look at it and then we'll be um, set to go until Wednesday. Have a good afternoon and um, hope you guys are succeeding with all of this. Okay, you are free to leave.